My favorite thing to do on the internet is one of those search item games. You know, those ones that give you a list of miscellaneous things, like a used match, a flashlight, a lawn chair, a flamingo, a blanket, coffee cup, etc. Well, you'll have to look for the impossibility detail scene to find them. I think they're their own uh, around the internet as a hidden object games. There are some pretty good ones, but most of them are just amusing distractions. I pirate them all, because I am not paying 20 bucks for some glorified extended where Waldo is for the PC. I don't feel bad. People buy them on the internet, and they should know that most people would pirate their own games anyway. My favorite thing for one was called The Murders of Jack the Ripper. My mother bought it for me when I was younger. You play Inspector Aberline and you're trying to solve the cases or a madame named Black Alice. If you choose to play as a female, you have to go play for the investigation, locate all the bodies of the victims. Each crime was a hidden object scene. You see, there were so many about 20 victims of the murderers. Emma Smith, Marfa Tarbram, Marianne Nicholas, Anne Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Odes, Mary Kelly, Rose Mellet, Alice McKenzie, Francis his Coles, Murray Sutman, and others. I can't remember exactly all of them. It has been five or six years since I played it. I used to play it in high school before I got out of college and learned of the internet. I haven't had the time to play of them since. This was also in the early 2000s, and the internet was less prompted, which would guys to one would either have printed out or saved as a document. I didn't have my own computer until I went to college, which I bought with my graduation money, so I couldn't save any of the guides or the game. During the game, you have to find all the current clues that will lead you to this lair, where he's being tortured by this thing. This giant six-foot winged creature with a robe. He has white blonde hair covered in up by a blue robe. And he also had this, her smile, and she has a smile on her face. I can't exactly describe it. It's not too wide. But the more I stare at it, the more uncomfortable I became. And the more the smile seems to widen. She wears a blue dress that resembles a ball gown, which poofs out at the bottom. Her skin is almost entirely covered by the dress. And I'm not sure exactly about the wings, which has to be attached to her back. Can exist all with that dress on. But whatever it is, just a video game. The things that she actually does for Jack in the game is the final scene change, depending on how many secret items you found. They were the artifacts that showed up briefly during this hidden object scenes, like Emma Smith's harp pin or Mary Kelly's greater stuff like that. And they were completely separated from the 10 objects required to finish the murder scene. Once you found 10 objects, your chances of getting the secret item were gone forever through that playthrough. There were a few checkpoints at the few secret items, 10, 15, 20, and hidden object 21. No matter how I tried, no matter how hard I look, I could never find more than 20. I have no idea what it was or who it belonged to, although the major character was missing the game was Jack. So my guess would have to be that it was Jack's knife. I went away to college and learned how to use the internet. It's a wonderful thing, no? I taught myself the proper way to do Google searches and stuff. I forgot about the game for a while. I met a girl not mar got married and danced with my mom at my wedding. I walked down the aisle to the Patchables Cannon and eventually my wife and I bought a house. We had some wedding gifts to furnish it, but we had little to no food at the time and less money we had to do a lot of shopping at Walmart. That was how I was reminded him of the game again. They were selling it for a bargain bin for five bucks. I decided what the hell I get it. Normally I buy something for myself for a treat, like a bag of Doritos or a box of gourmet popcorn. But this time I bought myself the game instead. My wife rolled her eyes and uh, muttered something about video games and being my, my, the, my other woman, then she kissed me on the cheek. I didn't play it immediately when I got home, but tomorrow was my day off. My wife had to go to work at the hospital right at night and wouldn't be home until around 3 a.m. So I decided to relieve my high school years just a little bit. When I booted up the game, I put my name in and I opened up my, the title screen. It was just the words, 
the murders of Jack the Ripper, scrawled in red front what looked like blood across the top of the screen. Underneath was dark, foggy alleyway with a mysterious figure walking towards the camera. Pretty standard fare, really not too anything remarkable. I booted up the game and started the first level. The first scene played out as I expected. The first murder was Emma Smith, the woman who had been murdered in a dingy white chapel alleyway. Yeah, this game had to investigate brutal murders of them, but it showed quite a bit more than the usual casual games you can get away with. You can bet it was pretty controversial in the HOG community and had a few copies were made, but that's probably why a few people have heard of it. I found her secret item and solved her murder case and moved down to the next character. The game proceeded in the fashion while, through the murderer scenes, it got more gruesome with each killing. The next noticeable killing came out of four entries in. When you find a girl murdered outside of the Black Alice's mansion, the brawl scrawled across the word that says, You shall pay for the sins of your forefathers. Below it, below it was the body of Marianne Nicholas. She had a scarf covering up her neck, and although her clothes were tattered, they were very detailed. Even as a youngster, I knew they wouldn't be able to show blood in the game, so I figured that the scarf was probably just to cover her up that where she had been cut. It was pretty gruesome for Janeiro of gaming, but it was mostly just about ghosts and haunted houses. I found the objects and then proceeded to ooh, the dialogue scene, where Inspector Aberline and Black Ma Alice discussed on how they would need to track down Jack or die trying. Most of the dialogue proceeded in this fashion. It was a hidden object game, and the scripts were those kinds of games were pretty generic. They proceeded in the fashion of several more murders, each one requiring to me to secure the murder scene by finding the object items around the bodies, one that was related to the case, and nine others that weren't. The game would automatically tell you which one was related to the murder and would it be shoehorned in the next dialogue appear somehow. One of them was a piece of a broken mirror which identified as the victim as Marianne Nicholas. After a few rounds, you could see if you could tell pretty much of every items were going to be the special items. When the items that you've been searching consists of a broken chair, a mug, a lighter, a prince nez, and a bonnet, you pretty much can assume the bonnet is the item in question and that it will belong to the victim. The next noticeable murder was so-called double event, the murderers of Liz Stride and Catherine Weddows. Those. Each player character was sent to a murder scene. You can only play it through one at a time. It was tripled me up. I always played as Aberline since I'm a guy and didn't want to play as the girl character, so I only saw Black Alice's investigation on the scene just to get the item. The secret items were Caroline Line Edo's ring and Str Liz Stride's pendant. Aberline gets Carol Caf Caroline's Edwells and Black Alice gets Liz Stride. I did it again. This game I solved the case and continued along the path. Black Alice and Aberline questioned whatever or not the Ripper was shown down or not. And Black Alice ran to confront her friend Mary Kelly. You could probably tell where this was going. The characters in the story geared up to the climax, and I had to go investigate the murderer of Mary Kelly. Mary Kelly's death was always my favorite. I have no idea about the Jack the Ripper lore, so all I had to go on was that Johnny Depp movie. I guess the real Mary Kelly died, even though oh, the one in the movie lived. Hollywood never gets things straight. She dies in the game too. And it was my favorite because she always looked so peaceful. She splayed all over the bed, looking like she's been poisoned or died in her sleep. I picked up the grater off the floor, finished the scene, and was about to finish the game. It was then right before the final scene. I decided to check my achievements. The game keeps track of how many quickly you solved your murders. And if you could solve a scene under in two minutes or over ten, you get awards, you get a badge. If you activate a special scene between Black Alice and Mary Kelly, it awards you a badge. I ended up with most of the badges, but I noticed the one I was missing was a secret item achievement. I only had found 19 out of 21. I knew exactly where the last item was 
Frank Aberline's notepad found in Jack's loft after you find Mary Kelly. The final hidden object scene was searching off Jack's loft. After you find out where he is, some supporting character whose name is also Jack or something. I searched for Google to guide to the game. Curiously, I found very few of them and very little information of the game at all. Nowadays, the hidden objects of the games are walkthroughs on the official websites in cases if people are having trouble. I didn't have the entry on the game, the game Fox, but I was always able to find the message board with some generic tips for hidden object games, like find the objects before time runs out, or use your hints, which they were not helpful and kind of insulting. There was one site that was helpful. It activated Norton's security alarms, but I turned them off because just about the pirate site I visit off that set those damn things. It was the message board that looked suspiciously like game and, and frequently asked questions, but it was nothing else. Most of the people weren't helpful, spewing some garbage about the rest of the internet. But there was one post that struck my attention. It said the following and nothing else. Do not play this game if you bought it, returned it. If you pirated it, delete it. It doesn't look evil, but it is. I know it sound, how that sounds. I really do. But this game is evil. Don't play it. I was struck of how odd this was. Why would someone like this be adverted to playing a game? I heard rumors around the internet about things like Ben Drowned and other various haunted Pokemon cartridges. So I like some of these stories, but there are. I don't believe for a second, and those games are actually haunted. I try not to think about it anymore. Someone posted down below in the comment in another. It was almost short, but it exactly told me of how I need to get what I wanted. He said to obtain the clicking the hand of the blue an angel creature that was not holding the knife. This didn't make much sense, as the creature's other hand is behind her dress, but I thought I'd try to look it anyway. I boot the game back up and let the scene play out normal, and the final scene play with Aberline and Black Alice that tracked the Ripper to his hideout, and he was about to be unmasked. Of course, they didn't find him, just an empty apartment. I played through the hidden object scene and got the notebook like usual. Aberline and Black Alice proceeded to the bedroom, where they saw the blue angel creature haunched over Jack's unconscious body. She held a knife in her right hand above the right her head, and with her left hand, which was the furthest from me, was behind her dress. While the dialogue played, something generic where Aberline and Black Alice talked about how afraid they were of the angel thing. I followed the path to the left, and, and it would take me down one hand. I clicked on the standard. You have found a secret item. A window popped up, and I saw the secret item that I've been missing this whole time. The secret item of the game award, awarded me was Jack's Heart. Jack's Heart was disturbingly well rendered. For the game that featured nothing but two-dimensional portraits, neither moved throughout the entire game. Although having realistic rendering that heart was actually made me a little uncomfortable. The blood dripped from the heart down over to the text and the OK button for the dialogue. After I accepted it, the game showed me a black and white photo of a woman lying dead under a sheet. Her head was facing towards me and her nose and breasts had been cut off. Her leg has been cut open and the sheet was a dark what assumed to be blood. It was incredibly unnerving. It stayed open for an uncomfortable amount of time. After that image faded on the screen, Jack was on screen with the blue angel creature. She was holding a knife that she used to kill his victims, and the image showed her about lowering it down to him. Jack was looking directly at me. Look at the object, object of horror terror on his face. He seemed to be pleading for help. The screen cut to black and I stared at it for a good 10 minutes, not knowing what was going on. But I didn't know one thing. I was shaken. I began to do some research on Jack the Ripper, and by that I meant Google his name. He only had five official victims. Marianne Nicholas, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Edo Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly. The, test, the rest are suspect. Since the game had much more victims than five, it must have been used some of the non canonical victims, and as they're called. I found a lot of interesting things, that about half the victims invented soily for the game, 
but many of them were murders that often connected to Jack. Even though nothing could be proved, Black Alice was still an originally character, probably a tends to feminists or appealed to the gamer girls or something. I had to play through the game again. I wanted me to take another three or four more hours. My wife would need to get sleep when she got home, but I couldn't stop. All of a sudden desired to play through a game one more time. I don't know why, but I had this feeling that something different would happen this time. If I played through the game one more time again, and after getting all the secret items, I felt like something else would happen. I'm not sure what it was, but I was feeling stronger than I ever felt in my life. I booted up the game and right away I knew something was different. The game was now called The Murderer of Jack the Ripper instead of The Murderers, plural, but the front color was now green and it was smoother, cursive front instead of the angular, jagged letters. And I remembered the screen no longer showed the shadowy figure walking through the mist but rather than the side character, who turned out to be the Ripper, kneeling down in the altar, praying. He then looked incredibly disturbed. I clicked on the new game option and started playing. The game opened with the investigation of Emma Smith's body again, but this time I could see quite a bit more of her. Her torso had been sliced open, her eyes had been gouged out, and her tongue was split in half. Instead of finding the generic items like matches and statuettes, I found her organs. Her small intestine, dissembled nose, eyeballs, several fingers placed in the harmless items but from before. After the murderer, Black Alice and Aberline appeared on the screen once more. Instead of generic dialogue they used to have upon meeting each other, she told him that the Ripper was probably too smart for him to catch, and I knew the ending was supposed to change if he got 21 uh, secret items, but not this. The next four murderers got even more graphic than before. This time, Emma Smith had the bar much, much higher. I still had to find the pieces of the victims' bodies before they escalate into decapitated heads and the whole arms instead. By the time Marianne Nicholas came out round, her neck was no longer covered by her scarf. I could see the cut in her throat that, that had killed her. She was lying in the pool of her own blood. Her clothes were soaked in it, and they were even more tattered from what I remembered. I had to find the shard of mirror that belonged to the victim, although there was no secret item to collect this time. Instead of talking about where they were going to track down Jack or Dyer's trying, Aberline and Black Alice were shown kissing. She asked him about his wife, and he told her not to worry about his wife. I shifted in my seat. Aberline's back was to the screen, and Black Alice was facing me. Her smile would look as if it was too wide to be real. She was looking around his waist and was squeezing him a little too tight. I couldn't stop playing the game. I had to see how it would end. I had to see what this new information was leading to. The game proceeded until the double event, but this time both bodies were investigated by Aberline. Black Alice was nowhere to be seen. Both women were mutilated beyond belief and resembled in autopsy photos. I found during a research of the real Jack the Ripper with frightening detail. Lon Liz's neck was slit from ear to ear. Catherine Edo's body was excavated. Her intestines were strewn over her shoulders, and something that could only be fecal matter ran down her legs, pooled underneath with blood. My vision began to swim in front of me, and I felt woozy. I put my head between my legs for a moment and took several breaths. This was getting far too intense. But I was too afraid of stopping. I had to see it through the end. I wasn't sure why anymore. This had become for about more than a silly secret ending to Hidden Objects game. I had to keep going. But I had no I, I had to no idea why. Mary Kelly was the absolute worst. Her face was hacked apart so much that it didn't look like a face anymore. Her throat had been cut. Her chest had been sliced off. One was placed neatly to her head, the other one was down right by her foot. Her innards had been completely emptied from her body, strewn around in various places. A long cut went up her leg. Blood had been clearly pouring out of it for quite a while. Black Alice was kneeling down beside her, presumably weeping. This was the point I lost myself completely. I vomited all over the rug. 
My wife still had not come home, and I had no idea what time it was. All I knew is I was sick, and hopefully, if I could get through the last level, I could figure out what happens at the end and finally put the game behind me. I played for the rest of the game and finally showed up at the final scene, the confrontation with Jack. Instead of holding an empty apartment, Aberline and Black Alice found him in his apartment already long, a fin tracked down his each of his arms, and the blood from them had clotted over. He had been dead for a while. There was no sign of blue angel creature. Black Alice went and picked up the item knife from his corpse and told Aberline to investigation was over. She pocketed the knife and left, and Aberline was left looking very confused. I share Aberline's confusion as to what the actual fuck that I just played. What happened to that creature? I remember that it was the last dozen times I played, but why was everything so radically different and what changed? What was going on? After the credits rolled, it allowed me to start a bonus level. I played as Black Alice throughout a final murder scene. This time I was investigating the murder of a prompted businessman whom she suspected to pay the Ripper to commit murders. He was nailed to a wall with iron spikes through his wrists and ankles. Once I found nine of the items, I noticed a scalpel sitting in front of, underneath the table next to Jack's body. I picked it up, a dialogue box flashed on the screen that read, You have found a secret item. The image of the scalpel was I picked up, and the text underneath read, Black Alice's scalpel. The screen switched to a new image without letting me finish the scene. Black Alice stood in front of the businessman, looking holding a hammer in her hand. She held a pair of nails on the other, the same kind that were on the man's wrists. She was smirking, and she dove the nail finally into her ankle, his ankles. There was a knock at the door. Jumped and I screamed at the top of my lungs. It was only my wife, home from her the hospital at last. I looked back to the screen, hoping to see the ending, but it showed was Black Alice's scalpel, and at that point I just turned the game off and shoved it in the drawer. I couldn't look at it anymore. I try not to think about it, but I can't get the images of the foul murder scene out of my head. I can't get rid of the images. I can't.